This is a small but efficient garage wood shop with just enough room to fit the basics. And this is a massive 2,800 square foot warehouse decked out with beautiful industrial machines and plenty of space to build whatever the business needs. And in this video, I will compare the two different shops head to head to see which shop may fit you the best. But I wouldn't come to any swift conclusions because bigger isn't always better. Size isn't everything. I mean, the best things come in small packages. Less is more, right? When I think back to the time I was in a smaller shop, it actually brings me a lot of joy. There was something special about having a small and intimate area to create in, to create anything in. And I remember always being so grateful for having a partner that let me have such a space. So the first lesson I've learned is no matter how much space I have or we have, having gratitude for the opportunity to create is what's most important. So is it a massive wood shop that you need? Or is a charming, tightly knit workspace plenty to satisfy your creativity needs? Well, to keep things organized, let's start with space. Space, like a lot of things, is entirely dependent on what you want to make. Do you make pens or do you build massive 10-foot tables? Keep a lookout for that video coming soon. Because when I was a hobbyist luthier, building guitars and at one point a violin, the single car garage was all I seemed to need. The 250 square feet fit my setup quite nicely with just enough work surfaces to keep the tools on one bench and the project safely on the other. This definitely doesn't mean that I didn't feel cramped at times. Because especially as I began building larger objects like cabinets, I suddenly had to find solutions on where to store things. And more often than not, we had cabinet boxes and trim pieces curing out with fresh finish in multiple rooms of our attached house. Hmm, I can still smell the cheap lacquer. And to put that into more perspective, the entirety of that shop can fit in my current office with space to spare. And the whole house for that matter can fit inside the warehouse, again with space to spare. And you're probably already thinking, clear winner, Corey. More space is better, duh. And yeah, it is, but. You better be wearing your Fitbit because you will likely be making record-breaking steps every day. And at the end of your day, your feet will certainly be barking like dogs. Oh, wow, oh, man. It hit my fucking elbow. But there really is no denying the ease of having enough space to build, finish, and store several projects at a time, but not without a grandiose bit of cost. For instance, in a small shop, I need my hand plane. Oh look, I have my hand plane. But in a large shop, ugh, I need my hand plane. Oh. This takes time, and time is, you guessed it, cha-ching, winner winner, chicken dinner. Time is money, and we will get into that topic of cost later on. So on one hand, a small shop is perfect if you're building one project at a time, those projects are moderately small, and you don't need a ton of storage, unless your spouse is okay with you storing lumber on her side of the bed. That was weird. I feel like someone just yelled my name. Anyways, a small shop will consume far less energy to heat or cool, tends to feel more intimate and inviting, and can save a lot of time when it comes to organization and daily travels across the floor space. But it tends to slow things down when different parts of a project or different projects in general have to overlap each other. While a massive shop will use tons more energy to heat or cool and cost way more money and time in floor travel and even cleanup at the end of the day. Not to mention, the sheer size feels less intimate or even a little cold, but it lends its hand when you need a lot of square footage to store stuff, as well as more room for potential employees and larger, more industrial machines always at the ready. Which brings us to our next consideration, the tool arsenal. Let's face it, us woodworkers love our tools, and we always seem to want the next best thing. The bigger, better, more powerful. <laughs> tools. 
and a smaller shop can be limiting on the size of machines as well as the horsepower that they run, since machines with stronger motors run on two or three phase power. But I want us to ask ourselves, are the size of machines what dictate our capabilities in woodworking? And my personal answer is no. I was able to build the exact same things I'm building now, but with a smaller shop, no jointer, a lunchbox planer, and mediocre tools because I had a passion for the craft and I would find a way no matter what, and I'm sure you might be the same. I have definitely noticed some huge differences with my large industrial machines though. Number one is the dust collection. It's nice to be able to walk up to a tool and have instant dust collection always connected. And the dust collector itself has a much better collection vat than the old Harbor Freight bags I used to wrestle with. Number two is the size. My machines now can fit very large boards and have plenty of power for the toughest of woods. And lastly, I have dedicated machines so I can keep one bandsaw as a resawing machine or one table saw as a dado machine. And all of these things cumulatively contribute to one thing, efficiency. Since I'm spending less time problem solving and more time shoving boards through machines, work tends to get done faster, as you probably guessed, but it's not as simple as you'd expect. I didn't realize how stress-free woodworking was when I had a smaller shop. My machines never cost over 3,000 US dollars, and I didn't have that many to maintenance when the time came. So how in the world did I happen upon all of this? Well, I'll tell you I didn't win the lottery and I certainly didn't inherit a dime. Let's just say I will owe the banks until the end of time because sometimes that's just the only way to start a business in my scenario. And that simple fact of always owing can take away some of the fun. To afford these machines, I have to bust my ass always. It honestly feels like I'm always trying to catch up. So the anxious and stressed part of me really wishes things were simple again. The small shop just brought me a sense of ease, even with less machines. But the ambitious and motivated part of me is very happy that I made the leap to grow my business. So I urge you to ask yourself, do you want a comfortable and adequate small shop with less overhead? Or do you want a large, efficient production shop with more bills to pay. Money. It runs our world whether we like it or not, and you need a lot of it, but you can never seem to get enough of it. And boy, is it substantial in our comparison. For example, my old wood shop was a single car garage attached to a house that we were already paying for. So the rent for that space was virtually free. And although it seemed like I was spending a lot on tools, realistically, the value of everything in that entire space was likely less than $15,000, which in comparison to this place seems like a small investment. Heating the small shop during the winter added about $50 per month at most, and if I had AC, it probably would have costed around the same per month. I also wasn't required to pay for business insurance, already had some home security protecting the shop, and had no loans or any debt of any kind. I wish I could say the same about this shop. To start, this shop is located in Colorado. Rent is nearly $4,000 a month. And on top of it, utilities usually adds about four to $600. But don't fall out of your chair yet because we aren't done. I'm also required to have insurance that covers me, my work, and this building in case of any damage, which costs $130 per month. I need security to protect this precious place, which is $25 a month. But imagine that, I need internet, which is another $100 per month. And last but not least, I owe a minimum of $250 per month towards the machines. <sighs> so the grand total per month is $4,510,000,000. Okay, okay, I'm just joking. It's $5,105 per month. And that's why I can't keep filming every project and I always have to keep moving, always. But it doesn't end there. In order to make this warehouse woodshop possible, it took over $100,000 in machines, electrical work, maintenance, and upgrades to get going. And that's one reason why I started my Patreon. My patrons help me afford the time to make these videos possible. And honestly, I even appreciate the conversations that I have with many of the members that reach out on the Patreon Messenger. Feel free to check out the different tiers I created with different benefits and become a member for as low 
low as $3 a month to support a small business, and receive a thank you gift for being one of the first 20 patrons. I appreciate you. So I'll be the first to admit that I didn't cheap out on my machines, but I certainly don't cheap out on my products or videos either, and I knew I wouldn't have the time to fix used machines constantly. Although I will be paying the price for quite some time, and the stress of it all can definitely become overwhelming at times, but like the strong people say, no pain, no gain, right? Purpose. What is your intention in your shop? Are you a hobbyist woodworker building fun things for your home? Are you a diehard woodworker on a mission to create a productive business? Or are you a furniture designer that wants to sell custom furniture? All of these dreams require different levels of shopification, and your dream might evolve over the years. In my life, I literally started woodworking because I couldn't afford a custom PRS guitar, so I made one. Kind of. <laughs> At that point, I only had a simple setup of construction tools, and now I design and build custom cabinetry, furniture, and household installations. And I can only imagine if I had the same tools I started with, I wouldn't necessarily be worse at what I do, I would just be a heck of a lot slower. So the overarching theme here seems to be, how important is efficiency to you? A smaller shop might actually prove to be more productive for someone who builds small instruments since a guitar doesn't take very much room to produce in the first place. And an industrial shop will definitely prove to be more productive for a cabinet shop since cabinets take up a massive amount of space through the whole process. And is your purpose in woodworking to enjoy the process and focus on the journey rather than the final product? Or is your purpose to grow a business and focus on the return on investment? Because quite frankly, either is a valid purpose. I would say smaller shops serve hobbyists and professionals pretty darn well, while warehouse shops are probably too much cost for a hobbyist, but always a nice dream to have. They just seem to be created for and suited for production shops. Happiness. Above all, the level of joy you get during the moments you create is far more valuable than any three-phase industrial machine could ever give you. Tools are tools. We use them to produce an action we need, then we move on. Joy and happiness, on the other hand, are complex human emotions that actually take energy to achieve, your energy. And when you find yourself in a moment where you can feel the lightness in your body or a week's worth of stress melt away, that joy is something that's worth your energy. And in that moment in time, if you happen to find yourself in a driveway with some budget tools or in a mega shop with all the bells and whistles, the only way that moment serves you any good is if you're happy. Please subscribe by clicking the left icon, check out all of our awesome build videos, and here's another unique video to watch.